The following video contains graphic descriptions of some of the most brutal animal attacks in human history. Viewer discretion and a fresh change of clothes are strongly advised. Oh, and happy Halloween. The African wilderness houses some of the most dangerous wildlife found on Earth. But what happens when one of its most feared predators starts hunting humans? In 1898, the British government decided to build a railway spanning from a port in Mombasa to Lake Victoria. The project was nicknamed the Lunatic Express, since many saw it as a massive waste of time and resources, along with being unnecessarily dangerous. So dangerous that most African natives refused to be involved in construction. So the British imported thousands of laborers from India to work on the bridge. These workers were both unfamiliar with the African brush, along with all the lethal animals in it. It wouldn't be long until several workers would go missing, but at first the British government brushed them off as deserters. But as the number of missing men grew larger, soon the horrific truth would come out. A pair of mainless male lions had been attacking the unsuspecting workers and eating them. Lions don't typically view humans as viable prey, and adult lions are actually naturally wary of humans. But lions are also incredibly adaptable, and these lions were hunting the workers like they were gazelle. While the men were working on the bridge during the day, the two lions were nowhere to be seen. It wasn't until they turned into their campsites for the night that the lions showed up. These lions would slip into the campsites undetected and drag helpless workers out of their tents to their death. <laughs> In one gruesome attack, one of the lions had grabbed a well-respected and powerful sick worker and ragdolled him out of his tent while the other workers could only listen to his bone-chilling screams of agony. The next day, his fellow workers found him, and from the position he was sitting in, it appeared as though he had survived. But as the men drew closer, they realized not only was he completely lifeless, but the lions had licked the skin completely off his cheeks, which formed a grisly smile. The men tried building thorn fences called bomas to keep the lions out. Unfortunately, nobody told the men that lions can leap well over 10 feet and easily clear a boma. And as the attacks and the missing men piled up, the lions started getting more confident. At first, weeks would go by between attacks, but soon, fatal maulings would happen almost daily. And while early on, only one of the rogue males would enter the campsite at a time, soon they'd start slaughtering workers together. In one chilling incident, they had moved the site of a hospital which the lions had began targeting. They moved the hospital over a mile away and set up the new hospital as a trap for the lions. Only a day later, the lions found the new hospital and continued their carnage. The lions even appeared to have plot armor. At one point, they had succeeded in trapping one of the male lions, but when the enraged predator started tearing the trap apart, panicking sepoys opened fire and missed every shot. One shot managed to spring open the trap door, allowing the lion to slip away. And as the attacks persisted, it appeared as though the lions had gone from killing to eat to just killing. We don't know just how many lives were taken, but according to Lieutenant John Patterson, up to 135 men were lost by the time the construction and the lions were finished. And we don't know for sure what led these lions to go on a human hunting spree. One of the lions was found to have an abscess in his teeth causing a painful infection that may have been too debilitating to hunt his usual prey, forcing him to seek out easier targets. One theory is that in the past, Arab slave trade caravans would run through Savo, and men that would have made no money on the market, like the old, injured, sick, or dying, would just be tossed down into the brush. It's possible that these lions of Savo were fed by these crimes against humanity and learned that humans as a food option is never completely off the table. In July 1945, a U.S. Navy heavy cruiser delivered uranium to the island of Tinian for what would end up being the world's first nuclear weapon used in war, which would be dropped in Hiroshima, Japan. Japan would get its revenge when a torpedo struck the USS Indianapolis as it was en route to the Philippines. In only 12 minutes, the imposing military cruiser was underwater, along with anyone unlucky enough to escape in time. Although, considering what would happen, maybe they were the lucky ones. Because as the stranded crew floated adrift in the Philippine Gulf, they quickly realized they had a major problem. Sharks, likely oceanic white tips, were stalking the hapless sailors. At first, the sharks simply cleaned up the casualties, feeding on the bodies of the deceased. But soon, they turned their attention to the survivors. As much as the sailors tried to float together, invariably, someone would drift away from the group. And that's when the patient sharks would move in. According to survivors, the men would thrash around and scream hysterically before being pulled under. 
and only a short while later, a life jacket would resurface, and nothing else. And as the dehydration, intense exposure, and saltwater poisoning took its toll, some men would hallucinate that they were being rescued and would swim away from the group towards a ship that wasn't there, not realizing they were paddling towards their own death. Even worse, some of the men would become delirious and start attacking their fellow shipmates, forcing them to literally cast them off towards the sharks. This living nightmare lasted five days, and when salvation finally came, only 317 out of the 1,196 men could be accounted for. But the psychological torture didn't end there for some of them. Captain Charles B. McVeigh would become the first captain to ever be court-martialed for losing his ship, and the reasoning was because he didn't zigzag. Even Commander Hashimoto, the guy that sunk his ship, testified that there was nothing McVeigh could have done, but it didn't matter. America had its scapegoat, and it was him. McVeigh regularly received hate mail and threats of violence from the family of the fallen. In 2000, he would be exonerated and found to have committed no wrongdoing, but not before the harassment and crippling survivor's guilt would break him. On November 6, 1968, the captain that had survived war, man-eating sharks, and dehydration took his own life while holding a toy sailor he had been given as a boy for good luck. The true monsters of this story weren't the sharks. The most dangerous bear in the world isn't the grizzly bear, or even the polar bear, but it's widely considered to be the sloth bear. Cause where adult grizzlies and polar bears have no natural predators, sloth bears regularly run fades with tigers and leopards. That generational trauma means you have an animal that has all the tools of a predator, but the mindset of prey. And that makes them terrifyingly unpredictable. The fact that habitat loss and encroachment causes them to come into constant contact with humans only makes it 10 times worse. The sloth bear of Mysore was infamous for unaliving 12 people and severely injuring another 24. Armed with wolverine claws and a devastating bite, sloth bears have a nasty habit of attacking the faces of their victims. Those that survived often lost an eye or a nose or had a chunk of their cheek ripped off. Those that didn't survive often had their faces torn off completely, and in some cases the bear ate the bodies of its victims. A far cry from the insects and fruits as Baloo of the jungle usually eats. Other bodies recovered had hands missing, and in some cases their entire chest cavity ripped open. Some describe the horrific injuries as being the work of an animal with the intent, but not necessarily the knowledge to kill. Kenneth Anderson had attempted to hunt the bear, while also saving a man who had been mauled to the point of sheer incapacitation. As Anderson tried carrying the man to safety, it got dark fast, which was probably why he didn't see the rock that tripped him and caused him to break his ankle. The immobilized Anderson survived the night, but the man he tried to save didn't. Anderson would be the one to put the murderous bear out of commission, but we still don't know what made this usually termite-eating bear go full Jeff Dahmer. Maybe it was revenge for a previous attack or a lost cub. Maybe everyone has a limit, and that bear hit his. The next story takes place on Ramri Island, off the coast of Myanmar, which borders China, Bangladesh, and India. In 1945, the British pulled up with the intention of establishing a new air base, but first had to contend with the Japanese Imperial Army, which had already captured the island. The British flanked the Japanese, who, rather than surrender, opted to try to escape by cutting through miles of dense, boggy, uncharted mangroves. As they did, the British circled the mangrove swamp, essentially stranding the men in the unforgiving terrain. Venomous snakes, spiders, and disease-carrying mosquitoes were almost an afterthought after the men realized they had waded directly into saltwater crocodile territory. The details of what happened next have been debated for years. Many say that the up to 20 foot long crocs converged on the defenseless soldiers, first picking off the ones that had already passed tents before moving on to the struggling and infirm. One British soldier described hearing three distinct sounds, the incessant firing of rifles overhead, the erratic splashing of excited crocodiles, and the blood-curdling cries of the men being dismembered and devoured alive. According to him, the sounds were deafening. Some men sought to take cover in the trees, only a couple feet above the marauding reptiles, when they made a horrific discovery. Crocs can easily launch themselves several feet out of the water, and the men that hadn't climbed high enough were caught in those snare trap jaws and torn to shreds. Another chilling realization was the intelligence of the cold-blooded predator. According to multiple sources, the crocs would use their tails as battering ramps to slam against the base of the trees, hoping to knock loose a prize like a twisted human pinata. Like African crocodiles camping in rivers during great migrations, these crocodiles seem perfectly content to bide their time. We have no way of knowing exactly how many lives were lost on that island, but we do know it was very likely in the several hundreds. 
We also have no way to confirm just how many were taken by the crocodiles and how many simply flatlined to dehydration, sickness, other wildlife, or simply casualties of war. However, this is widely considered to be the most lethal crocodile attack in human history. And since saltwater crocodiles are capable of living 70 plus years, the chances that at least one of those same crocodiles are still there are low, but they're not zero. Crocodiles are one of the most stubbornly resilient things on Earth. They've been around for about 200 million years and have barely changed. And with a wide-ranging diet and few if any natural predators, crocs can live virtually anywhere there's warmth and water. So it makes sense that one of the most infamous animal serial killers of all time was a crocodile. Gustave was an 18-foot reptilian Ted Bundy rumored to have been responsible for up to 300 names missing from the census. According to legend, the massive Nile predator was too bulky to hunt the typical fish, antelope, and zebra, leading him to go after bigger, tougher game like hippos, buffalo, and even humans. The Burundi butcher would allegedly hunt anything that came into its line of sight without prejudice. And like all crocs, his favorite method of hunting would have likely been lying in wait in the water before exploding and unleashing a 3,000 pound bite force to crush whatever was unlucky enough to get caught in its jaws, before using the infamous death roll to shred their victim into bite-sized chunks. It's likely most human casualties were adults collecting water and children playing in the shallow end, not realizing the disturbance was basically ringing the dinner bell. Gustave was also disturbingly indestructible, with several eyewitnesses describing what they swore were bullet wounds tattooed across its armored skin. But the eeriest part was that for a monster nearly the length of a bus, Gustave was unexplainably never caught. In one attempt, researchers placed a live goat in a cage as bait to lure the beast out. After a storm, the next morning the cage was empty, but Gustave was nowhere to be found. We don't know how old he is, how long he had been hunting humans, just how many people had been lost to him, or even if he's still alive. There were some reports of Gustave having been shot by a hunter in 2019, but with no photographic evidence, there's still a chance that he's out there prowling the rivers of Burundi. The way I see it, there's only three possible options. One, he's dead. Two, he's still out there serving as unethical population control. Or three, he has NordVPN. Cause NordVPN creates an encrypted tunnel for you and your data and protects your identity by hiding your IP address, allowing you to go off the grid untrackable and untraceable just like Gustav. And like Crocs, who can be found almost anywhere, NordVPN gives you the option to connect to thousands of different servers across countries all over. If you want to enjoy the perks of Australian entertainment without also entertaining the wildlife, Australian servers are just a click away. And unlike the allegedly 2,000 pound Gustav, with fast, reliable servers, you never have to feel like you sold your speed for security. With NordVPN's threat protection, you can enjoy your internet experience without also being plagued by ads, trackers, and malware. So to get the most out of your streaming service, go to nordvpn.com slash casualgeographic for a huge discount on a two-year plan with an additional four months free. With Nord's money-back guarantee, it's virtually risk-free. Nothing about Gustav was risk-free. And with Salties having the strongest recorded bite force of any animal, the only guarantee was that anything caught in those vice grip jaws was something you're not getting back. In 2003, locals in Malawi were so terrified of one animal that it drove 4,000 of them to completely abandon their villages to seek refuge. The marauding beast had mauled three people into chalk outlines and severely disfigured another 16. Those that survived were essentially crippled for life, with some missing both hands and legs with others missing eyes and ears. In one gruesome attack, a woman had gotten her jaw completely detached. The mysterious assailant was so feared and avoided capture for so long that some believed that the attacks were the work of a supernatural creature. In truth, these people were being stalked and hunted by a rabid hyena. Although they're armed with arguably the most devastating bite of any land mammal, hyenas are actually wary of humans. But as many will tell you, anything that gets rabies quickly becomes a different kind of animal. Especially when that animal has jaws strong enough to amputate an elephant. The rabid hyena terrorized the people of Malawi for weeks, but whether the actual animal responsible for the maimings was caught and killed was never confirmed. The most infamous animal mass murderer of all time lived in Nepal in the Kamauan district of India. The Bengal tiger of Champawat was believed to be responsible for 436 less people on earth. According to research, the carnage started in Nepal, but when hunters were called in, the tiger successfully evaded all of them. 
Eventually, she was driven out of the area and swam across a river and invaded India, where the attacks only got worse. The homicidal big cat would typically target young women and children and would often travel up to 20 miles following the kill, making it that much harder to capture her. And unlike most tigers, who typically hunt during dusk or dawn, the man-eater at Champawat almost exclusively caught bodies during broad daylight. She became so reviled that locals no longer referred to her as a cat, but as the Devil of India. The tiger's reverberating roar paralyzed entire villages, with grown men refusing to leave their huts to go to work, lest a rampaging predator turn them into a statistic. It was believed that the tigress had been shot by an especially cruel hunter, which broke several of her canine teeth, leaving her mortally wounded. It's likely that this injury, along with the fact that tigers are one of the few animals that'll actively seek revenge, that drove the tiger to eventually start seeking out easier prey. People. And as a highly intelligent predator, she was constantly adapting and able to consistently avoid capture. When she was finally taken down, it was clear from the nasty injuries the tiger had sustained that she was not the villain of this story. That doesn't change the fact that she went out as the most prolific man murker in nature. And if you think you're safe because you don't live in Asia, just keep in mind that there are more tigers in the United States than in the rest of the world combined.